Greeting. Uh, my name is the Dr. Amir Lerman, a professor of medicine and the director of research for Cardiovascular Division at the Mayo Clinic. Today I'm here to talk to you about eating for the healthy heart. Our population in the United States and the world is preoccupied uh, with eating and diet. The average American spend on nearly 80 minutes a day eating and or thinking, deciding what to eat. There is a major problem in stating what is considered a healthy food and the discrepancy between epidemiological data and outcome data. Most data is retrospective or cohort in nature. Randomized clinical trial data is difficult to accomplish in large number well-controlled study and blinded. There is also discrepancy between study examining surrogate cardiovascular markers and study measuring cardiovascular outcome. Few studies have supported one single food as being overly beneficial and difficulties in maintaining calorie neutral studies. Moreover, most positive studies highlight diet as being beneficial without being to link mechanism to outcome. Today I will tell you the menu is going to be made from the effect of diet, how much do we eat, what do we eat, and how do we eat that. Are we able to change our, our nature? So from multiple studies, it determined that the health and their contribution to premature death are almost 40% are behavioral patterns. From these behavioral patterns, the majority of them are actually eating habit, obesity, and smoking. Other piece of information that pointed to the diet is from the seven country studies. These interesting studies show that the relationship between cardiovascular mortality and the level of cholesterol is different between areas. Is it higher correlation in the United States and Northern Europe, but it's lower in the Mediterranean and Japan, indicating again that the type of the diet and the environment that people are exposed to may have a significant impact and effect on the mortality even with the same level of cholesterol. How much do we eat? And how is it linked to disease? It, there are not many studies that link the relationship between diet, reduction of weight, and cardiovascular disease. These are two landmark studies that published in the New England Circulation. This study was currently addressed the same question about the dietary wellness intervention can induce regression of surrogate for atherosclerosis, such as carotid atherosclerosis. It is easy to see, as we can see from this figure, that all diet, including low-fat diet, Mediterranean diet, and low-carbohydrate diet, induce more or less the same reduction in weight. And they also reduce the same amount in change in atherosclerosis in the carotid artery, as well as blood pressure, indicating that two years weight loss diet can induce significant regression of measurable um, parameters of atherosclerosis, and the effect is similar in low-fat diet, Mediterranean, or low-carbohydrate uh, strategies. We move to the next one, what do we eat? Now, it's essential to know that the amount of calories that is stated on the food not necessarily reflect and translate directly to how much the effect on weight is going to be. For instance, if you have the same amount of calorie derived from nuts, of french fries. If you eat the, the french fries, as indicated here, you may gain about three pounds. However, if you have the same calorie amount from nuts, you're actually going to lose about half of a pound. It has to do with the way the food is prepared, the amount of energy and calories which is actually needed to digest this kind of food. So the amount of calorie themselves may be misleading how is it linked to the weight as well as to the surrogate of cardiovascular disease. In the last decade, we were flooded with multiple diets that all of them are promoted as being healthy, induce weight loss, and reduce cardiovascular disease. However, we are lacking a lot of mechanism of the diet. And its other problem is that diet, when we go and shop for food, the sections in the supermarket or anywhere we, uh, we shop are not divided based on diet, and we need to know how to integrate element in order to build this healthy diet. One of the diet that came along as one of the most healthiest one is the Mediterranean diet that have only 30 to 40 percent fat. So let's review what's in this Mediterranean diet and what data do we have that promote this data as one of the healthiest diet. 
One of the landmark studies that was done is the Lyon Diet Heart Study. And it's randomized almost 600, more than 600 patients to Mediterranean diet and control diet. And they were followed for several years. There was results showed total cardiac mortality reduced by 65% and sudden death by 64%. And these are the figures that depict the result. You can see that in the group that were on a Mediterranean diet, there was significant reduction in cardiovascular event in five years follow-up. Surely, if you can see such a figure with a new medical intervention, you will elect your patient to be placed on this specific drug. Another study from Greece that had more than 22,000 patients was a more of a retrospective analysis, interviewed people about their habit, about drinking of wine and the diet and the portion of the diet, and demonstrated that this Mediterranean diet resulted in 25% reduction in death, 30% in heart disease, and also death from cancer that usually comes together with a reduction of event from diet. The Mediterranean diet is composed of multiple elements. Uh, specifically, we can see on the daily fruit, ve vegetables and, and fruits, a lot of uh, beans. Uh, meat is eaten very uh, small in a weekly portion of the poultry and fish, and only rarely uh, red meat. It also ha have a lot of uh, uh, component of daily activity, water as to drink, and of course, might wine in moderation. So let's go a little bit specifically in depth into this element. One of the major components of Mediterranean diet is vegetable and fruit. They are very high in phytochemicals, they have low in calories when we digest them, and they are associated with low risk of coronary heart disease. Another interesting component on Mediterranean diet that was draw attention the last years is the olive oil. Now, olive oil is known to lower total LDL cholesterol. It doesn't lower uh, HDL cholesterol. It creates resistance to oxidation, and it's associated with risk of coronary disease. Recently shown that it's improved vascular and endothelial function and also prevents stroke. So olive oil is one of the major components of the Mediterranean diet that has been shown to have a beneficial effect. Another significant element is the fish and shellfish that are rich with omega-3 fatty acid. It is known for medical other studies to show antiarrhythmic effect, antithrombotic effect, lower triglyceride, lower blood pressure, and has an anti-inflammatory effect. It associates with reduced risk of coronary heart disease and sudden death in multiple studies. Since then, people try to promote only the element of omega-3 fatty acid as a component to supplement the diet in order to reduce event. However, this put the point, this study showed that there is no difference if you supplement the diet with this uh, uh, diet supplementation, again indicating that you cannot, very difficult to separate one element from the diet, from the whole diet in order to reduce event, and then the whole diet is required probably to have a beneficial effect. Wine is one of the major components of the Mediterranean diet, is raised HDL, inhibit platelet aggregation, it's high in phenolic antioxidant, and it reduces uh, cardiovascular event. The moderate consumption of wine in patients without and with coronary disease were shown in multiple studies to reduce, as we can see from this figure, the cardiovascular event. Higher dose, of course, were associated with higher event, but moderate consumption is secondly significantly associated with reduction of cardiovascular event. And of course, you cannot finish Mediterranean diet without a significant dessert. And one of the major components of dessert uh, of the Mediterranean diet is the effect of dark, specifically dark chocolate, on cardiovascular event. I'm not going to go in deep to all the study, but there are multiple studies uh, showing the mechanism of effect of chocolate. Some of them reduce blood pressure and stroke recently, improve vascular function, specifically endothelial function, reduce platelet reactivity, improve insulin resistance, mobilizing uh, progenitor cells and, and uh, it reduces anti uh, increased anti-inflammatory factor and also has an antidepressant effect. So dark chocolate in specifically has significantly effect with shown in mechanism uh, of the effect on cardiovascular health. In general, if we have fruits and nuts and vegetables and whole grain, all of them were associated in cohort studies to be associated with reduction of cardiovascular event as is seen in this figure. When we look at diet, we need to show 
that if we look at diet as a, label it as a healthy diet, we need to see that it's actually have a scientific background behind it. It has weight reduction, improved lipid profile, reduce oxidative stress, reduce blood pressure, and specifically induce and improve vascular function. Hypothetically, if we take all the, some of the elements of the Mediterranean diet, like such as wine, fish, dark chocolate, fruit and vegetables, and we combine them, hypothetically we can have an almost 76% reduction in cardiovascular event, which is equivalent to if you take multiple drugs such as statin, aspirin, folic acid, and ACE inhibition, promoting the concept a little bit from the poly pill to maybe the poly meal. We also need to know that there is a lot of uh, uh, stories about diet and a lot of myth. So there are several myths on the diet that were uh, proved or disputed in the past. One of them, for instance, is the beneficial effect of chicken soup. And it's known from multiple in vitro studies that ch the element of chicken soup actually in inhibit inflama inflammation and neutrophil uh, chemotaxis. Again, putting link of mechanism of the effect. And recently, the effect of a, uh, of uh, organic food was challenged, and in a recent paper in the Annals of Internal Medicine, as well as an uh, article in the uh, New York Times, uh, it was promoted that it doesn't have a better nutritional uh, element, and not sure that the, the effect of toxic is, is different, trying to challenge again that maybe a regular diet is as good as an organic diet. Dietary supplementation is very common in our society, it's a $28 billion uh, dollar, uh, uh, industry, estimated amount that Americans spend on dietary supplementation last year. However, the number of times since the 94 that the FDA has approved the safety of efficacy of supplementation is zero, putting a caution on the fact that this supplementation may not be healthy. So I was trying to tell you and promote that there are some data, and there are in vitro and surrogate data that Mediterranean diet is a, is a healthy diet. It's also important how do we eat that. It is known from several studies that eating with the family and friends has a lot of beneficial effect uh, uh, on cardiovascular mortality than just eating alone. So I hope you enjoy this talk and uh, uh, bon appetit.